Hello everyone and welcome. Welcome to the 78th season of the NBA. 78th edition, you know, this is probably going to be another great year. Probably the best year that we've ever had. We have a lot of new changes in the league. We have the in-season tournament. We have new policy rules that will probably affect team strategies with load man management. We have, you know, the change of landscape that happened over the off-season. The trades happening over the off-season with Dame Leonard going to, to, to the Milwaukee Bucks. Drew Holiday swapping places and going to Portland. Uh, but then also to the Celtics, uh, you know, via Portland, uh, now with the Celtics, with Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum, who Stephen A. Smith recently said uh, at his last show on the 24th of October, that isn't one of the top five duos in the NBA. Of course, I gave a little bit of a response to that in uh, my last video. So you can go check that out. Of course, it's on TikTok, YouTube, Baseline to Baseline with Alice Albert. Uh, but search that, you know, I'm on all mostly all platforms facebook youtube twitter x <laughs> uh tiktok and all these other places and of course you know i bring up stephen a smith because you know one thing i want to get into really quickly is you know i hear he's 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 doing a movie uh you know this thespian this real island boy trying to get into the you know the whole you know movie scene you know he's not just brick on general hospital he wants to kind of take on hollywood you know and he's turning his book his awesome book straight shooter uh, which I got as a birthday present for my lovely wife, of course, who got it for me. And, of course, I got a, one of the pre-ordered versions. And whilst I haven't finished reading it yet, you know, I got an aut autographed copy. So that's really cool. It's really cool to have something from Stephen A. Smith, another Caribbean descendant brother who, you know, has done it big and, and you know, set the standard for us NBA or sports analysts, black sports analysts in the world. And, you know, I'm, I heard that they're looking for... Uh, someone to play the role of Stephen A. Smith and he said on one of the interviews that he did that you know he's thinking about Omari Hardwick you know to pay him but he said you know he wants someone that doesn't look as good as Omari Hardwick because you know he's just too good looking <laughs> and he doesn't think you know Omari probably look uh, you know enough like him so I'm like you know what well if you want a less attractive version of Omari Hardwick you know who is also an NBA analyst and who is also an actor and who is also uh, into basketball and sports as much as he is talking on TV about you know the NBA specifically. You know you know hey you don't need to look any further. I I, I fit the bill, man. You know I could I could say to stay off the weed just like you, bro. <laughs> I could say it just like you. And especially with the conversation about, about the top five du duos and whether or not Jason Tatum or Jalen Brown is, is part of that top five conversation. You know, I had a really interesting uh, and, and two, uh, two pronged approach to that, to that uh, comment that he made. So you could go check out that other video. The main reason, of course, uh, that I'm here is to talk about the NBA, you know, starting up the season. Again, we had two great matches last night with the uh, Phoenix Suns and uh, the Golden State Warriors battling out, battling it out with Kevin Durant playing in the Chase Center for the first time since his injuries. Uh, you know, he had two opportunities to do that. Um, you know, since his 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 inclusion on the team roster for the Golden State Warriors, I should say. Of course, he broke ground with Joe Lacob uh, for the new facility that they have they are at right now. But he never got a chance to play for the team because of of course he left for the Brooklyn Brooklyn Nets. And he you know he when he had the opportunity to play as uh, an opponent, he was injured. Uh, I think the second time around when he had that, that chance with the Brooklyn Nets. So, you know, he played over there in uh, the, 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 the the Chase Center for the first time. You know, there's all this conversation about whether or not his jersey should be retired by Golden State. Yes, do the right thing, Joe Lacob. And, you know, I think he's leading towards that. But, of course, I just kind of wanted to talk about what I spoke about on Sports Max last night. We had a really full and packed show. I didn't even get to really go into everything that I wanted to say. So, of course, I kind of referenced the top five duo uh, list in the NBA, which I addressed on another uh, video. You go check that out on, on my on, on TikTok or YouTube or Twitter or wherever else. Uh, but also, um, I just kind of wanted to touch some of the things that I was asked to prep for for the show last night that we didn't really get to, get to, to have a look at. And, of course, we spoke about title contenders. Of course, I spoke about that in depth. So, go look at that video. But I said, you know, who I think my four contenders are in the conferences are the Bucks and Celtics with, you know, those crazy trades that they were able to pull off and solidify their teams in the respects that they have. And the, the in the West, I say the Nuggets and the Lakers. Um, but there's a caveat to that. 
because I think the Lakers showed last night that they're probably not ready just yet. You know, they're still trying to get that team chemistry with all of the new faces. Tori and Prince played really well last night. Gabe Vincent, not so much. Uh, Jackson Hayes showed little flashes of what he could do for this team. So, you know, Darvin Ham has a little... Um, period of having to, to adjust and get these guys into the same uh, flow and same rhythm to kind of get them to the last half of the last season where they just started to, you know, just win games to get all the way to the Western Conference Finals. So these are my contenders. Of course, you have, you know, dark horses and everything. I think the Nuggets showed last night there. They've stamped their authority on, you know, the start of the season where this was not a fluke. We won the game convincingly. We got our rings. And who's your daddy? <laughs> Which was a chance that was chanted out in the stadium last night, uh, you know, kind of taunting the Los Angeles Lakers for their loss and everything. The dark horses that I have, uh, you know, for, for the season, it's always really interesting to kind of understand what a dark horse is uh, for the NBA. Are you talking about championship dark horses? Or are you talking about playoff dark horses? There are quite, quite a few uh, uh, teams that you could kind of mention there. So my championship dark horses for each of the conferences, I say we have the Miami Heat. Do not underestimate the Miami Heat. They've shown you for the last two to three years that they could get to the NBA Finals with barely anything on their roster and cause trouble. The Miami Heat, Heat are a shoe-in for a dark horse in the, in the East as a contender. So Miami Heat, uh, the Cleveland Cavaliers. We have on the West, I have the Minnesota uh, Timberwolves. I think another year of Anthony Davis, not Anthony Davis, uh, Carl Anthony Towns and Anthony Edwards playing together and Anthony Edwards showing off uh, and showing up um, in his and showing out as well which is what I was actually trying to say showing out in the FIBA World Cup championships of course they didn't get a medal they came fourth but Anthony Edwards showed that you know he's ready for superstar you know getting his, his new signature shoe and you know he's ready to show you know he can lead a franchise uh, forward and I think he should be the face of the franchise rather than Kyle, Kyle Anthony Towns so you know look out for them I think they're going to be really good so we have the T-Wolves and the Kings you know the Kings have kind of showed last year that you know they, they have the right recipe you know to kind of give uh, teams trouble Jaron Fox was Mr. Clutch last year uh, scoring the most points in the fourth quarter and showing that you know he can kind of lead a team as well alongside Demontis Sabonis um, and you know Mike Brown is showing that you know he's a good coach so you know the Kings I think are up there but I really want to throw a really dark horse into this equation. And I would say the Mavericks. Uh, Kyrie Irving and Luka Doncic didn't really show out last year. Um, they had a very disappointing end to the season, not making the playoffs. Um, going, I think it was 5-11 and 11 in their last 16 games. Um, and Kyrie Irving has a lot to try to, to prove to, to, to everyone. Getting the recent contract ex extension that he got, uh, $126 million, I think it was, for the three years with the Mavericks. And I think he will want to try to show Mark Cuban that that investment made sense. And I think uh, with a full season together rather than an in-season trade, trade, trading camp and everything coming together, I think the Mavs could actually be a really, really dark horse uh, for a title contention this year. But I still kind of have the other teams that I mentioned first above in that top tier. Um, I'm not going to go into playoff dark horses because you have teams like Detroit and Orlando and the Pacers who are probably ripe to kind of make a little bit of a leap with their uh, players and some of their important players becoming healthy and ready to kind of uh, make that step. We have in the West, the Oklahoma City Thunder, Rockets and Pelicans. Uh, you think uh, with Zion Williamson coming back and being healthy. Let's remember, guys, when Zion Williamson was coming into the season last year, coming off of the playoff exit that the, 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 the New Orleans Pelicans had with CJ McCollum after only being traded there and Brandon Ingram really showing that, you know, this team could kind of put it together. Only if a healthy Zion Williamson comes in, he could kind of propel this team. You know, it's still the same situation. So you never know. I think they could actually, uh, you know, put themselves in into a playoff contending situation that could kind of force themselves maybe into the dark horse route as well. So you never know. Um, free agency winners and losers. You know, we spoke about that, but we, did, well, we didn't get a chance to talk about this. Uh, we had a look at the Lakers, the Celtics and the Portland Trailblazers. I think our major winners in the off season. The Celtics, I think, getting Drew Holiday um, after what he was able to do for the Milwaukee Bucks and putting them over the hump to win a championship a few years ago. Um, you know, I think he's probably going to do the same sort of thing with the Celtics, who I thought, or who I predicted on Sportsmax last night, would probably be the champions this year. But of course, that all depends on health. 
uh, Kristaps Spazigis is also a very, very difficult uh, person to deal with. I just see a tweet from Adrian Wojnarowski here that James Harden has returned to the Philadelphia 76ers facility. Let's see what happens there. Um, so I think, you know, the Lakers, Celtics, and Portland, I think Portland got what they wanted out of this trade by disappointing Damian Lillard and getting Scoot Henderson, getting the trades that they did. Uh, Chauncey Billups, Billups, of course, has said that he's going to, you know, put his hand over Scoot Henderson and try to kind of ease his transition into the NBA, being the point guard that he is, and also bringing Malcolm Brogdon uh, to the squad to help mentor him as well. I think Scoot is going to be in a really good position moving forward. So I think they are one of the winners of the offseason as well. Automatic losers. The Miami Heat. They didn't get game after all of this fanfare about him going there. Jimmy Butler went through a total depression. Came into training camp looking totally depressed. And he said he was emotional. <laughs> so uh, Jimmy Butler you have, and the Miami Heat. Pat Riley talking about you know the guys need to step up and be 25 point scorers alongside Bam and Jimmy Butler he's probably looking at uh, guys like uh, Tyler Hero Tyler Hero you need to step up you need to do something you need to kind of be that player that you know um, the, 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 the Portland Trade Blazers wanted and more so um so the Miami Heat is definitely the 76ers. We just spoke about James Harden returning to the, the practice facilities. Um, you know, this ongoing drama about him and, and uh, Daryl Morey who had him wanting to be traded. We don't know where this is going to go. So I think this is uh, a losing position for the, 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 the Philadelphia 76ers. The Warriors, I have the Warriors. You know, them getting Chris Paul was a, a, was a crazy trade. You know, he's on a team that he's battled throughout his whole career. But I think he's actually going to pay dividends for them and being able to solidify and stabilize their offense with less turnovers and everything. Why I say they're a loser, they didn't get a center. They trained uh, and they worked out Dwight Howard. They didn't progress with choosing him uh, to join their roster. I think they are missing a big man to make them a credible threat in the West. If they do... I think they vault up into contended status um, as one of the guys who could kind of uh, push forward in the season if they get a really good bonafide center who could help their cause defensively and could kind of hit a few buckets into the Bucks. I think you know they lost quite a lot uh, last season. They lost a coach, a championship coach, who kind of got them to that position. You know who had been with them, the continuity that comes with that. I think that that really will affect them. You have an unproven coach in Adrian Griffin, and they also lost their associate head coach, Terry Stotts, who was the head coach for Damian Lillard whilst he was in Portland, who probably would have really helped, you know, Adrian Griffin with utilizing uh, Damian Lillard quite a lot. And I think, you know, them losing him was a, a big deal. Um, and also losing Drew Holiday. Of course, I spoke about on Sportsmax what I think he did to this for this team. And losing him to a, a conference rival in the Celtics, I think, puts... Uh, you know, the Bucks in a disadvantage, disadvantageous position where they will be really hard to play against. They will be one of the top three seeds in the East, but can they actually go all the way? It's left to be seen, but we, we, we see what happens there. Top five players to watch. I kind of spoke about that on, on screen, uh, on, on Sportsmax last night. I have Drew Holiday, Damian Lillard, Jordan Poole. Look out for Jordan Poole this year, folks. You know, even after he left the team, the Warriors last uh, during the off season, Clay Thompson and Steph Curry, based on the report uh, that was written up by, I think it was Mark Spears of Anscape. I could be wrong there, pardon me if not. But a report came out that Clay Thompson and Steph Curry reached out to Jordan Poole uh, during the off season to train with him and to talk to him and tell him, you know, good luck on, on his new uh, journey and being a leader. And, you know, Steph tried to coach him into what being a leader should be. So I think we need to look out for Jordan Poole this year and what he will actually do, the ups and downs and being the focus of scouting reports. It'll be really interesting to see what he does uh, as the season progresses. Victor Wembanyama. I'm not going to talk about him any further. We've spoken about him ad nauseum uh, throughout the whole off-season, pre-season, Summer League, etc. We know what the deal is. And LeBron James. We have LeBron coming into season 21. He is now chasing Oscar Schmidt. Uh, as an all-time leader in basketball history. We're talking about basketball. Look up Wikipedia and look out for the, the all-time leader in scoring. It's Oscar, Oscar Schmidt. Not sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly. But, you know, he has a total of 49,000 points. Um, 
737, 29,737 points throughout his whole career, I suppose regular season and playoffs, uh, a Brazilian basketball player who never played in the NBA, but if he did, he probably would have been a great as well, as most people say. Uh, just like Arvidas Sabonis when he came over from Europe and played in the NBA. Uh, you know, he's going to be, he's chasing that record this year. And also, he is chasing um, uh, the all-time leading scorer in NBA history as well, chasing uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, I believe, um, to be the, the all-time basketball player, scoring champion, champion extraordinaire, for uh, NBA seasons and uh, you know it's, it's it's going to be interesting to see how you know this season plays out it's going to be not a farewell tour but you know you're going to see a lot of praising of LeBron, LeBron along the way but we want to see what he does this season in this revenge season and can he take a step back to Anthony Davis and can Anthony Davis elevate his game to become the leader of this team to take them to where they need to go to so I just really wanted to touch really quickly some of the things that we uh, we missed on the show last night. Uh, you know, we talk about the, the top five players to watch, but I didn't kind of go, get into Jordan Poole um, and everyone else. The Dark Horses, like I said, I think we, we have to look out for guys like the Miami Heat uh, and the Cleveland Cavaliers, uh, the Minnesota Timberwolves, uh, Sacramento Kings, and the truest definition of a dark horse, uh, which uh, the definition from the Merriam-Webster dictionary says, a usually little-known contender that makes an unexpectedly good showing in whatever contest that they have. Uh, and I think the Mavs are the definition of that, an entrant into a contest that is judged as unlikely to, to succeed. I think the, 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 the showing last season was a bit abysmal for the, the Mavericks, and I think many people have them really low on their ladder of contenders this year but i think with a strong showing this year you're going for a full training camp with jason kidd and the team you know drafted Derek lively they got grant williams they brought back uh, uh uh seth curry you know they have a team that could kind of give people some trouble as well for sure so let's see what happens uh, it's going to be great to see how the season goes. This is the 78th season of the NBA. And of course, like I said, this is Alistair Albert of Sports Max Zone, the NBA's, uh, the Caribbean's NBA lead NBA analyst, uh, bringing the Caribbean to the world via the NBA, like I say. Uh, you know, if you like this video and want more uh, analysis, like and subscribe to Baseline to Baseline with Alistair Albert. This was a little bit of a long video. This will go on to YouTube and I will cut it up into little bite-sized pieces to put on TikTok. Just started TikTok. I don't really know what the algorithm is, but check it out. Like and subscribe. Help me help me get 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 this career up and going for real now. <laughs> Peace guys. Take care. Enjoy the season. You know I'm gonna be around, you know, spitting some truth here and there. So look out for some videos and I hope you enjoy. Talk soon.